So we're going to continue talking about the E2 reaction in cyclohexanes because one of the key aspects of the E2 reaction that is you should never ever forget is how important stereochemistry is in this reaction. Stereochemistry is a theme we're going to be talking about throughout these videos on the E2 in cyclohexane systems. So here's another example of an E2 reaction. Hopefully you won't find this one too difficult. So if you look at this one, you see that we've got a cyclohexane ring with a bromine on it. And we've got two methyl groups on the carbon next door. And the question is, what is going to be the product of this reaction? And we can just identify our leaving group here. The leaving group should be bromine, right? And then we're going to look at what are some of the possible products we can get from this reaction. Now, in the E2 reaction, remember, we have a strong base, which is present here, NaOCH3. And NaOCH3 is going to break a carbon-hydrogen bond, and we're going to form a carbon-carbon double bond and break the carbon-halogen, or in this case, carbon-bromine bond. Now, normally we want to follow Zaitsev's rule, right? We want to form the more substituted alkene. And when we look about this product here, we look that we have our alpha carbon attached to the bromine, and we look at our beta carbon, on the right hand side, notice that it has two alkyl groups attached, two CH3 groups attached. Therefore, we cannot remove, there's no carbon hydrogen bond to remove here. We cannot break a carbon carbon bond, we have to bro break a carbon hydrogen bond. So, no double bond can form here. That means that we can only remove one of these hydrogens on the other beta carbon. And if we do that, then we would get this product here. We'd be forming carbon-carbon. Let's see if I can trade in my pen for something a little bit more robust. Form and break. So we're going to form carbon-carbon pi. We're going to break carbon-bromine. And we're going to break carbon-hydrogen. Okay, and let's just draw that product in like that. Okay, so that's the only product that we can possibly form. And we'd have CH3OH, and we'd also form NABR as well. Okay, now let's just modify it a little bit here. This, that should have been pretty straightforward. Now let's just modify it. Let's imagine that we've got a labeled cyclohexane. And we're going to put in a deuterium, which remember is an isotope of hydrogen. It is exactly the same as hydrogen, except that in experiments like NMR, we can actually tell the difference. We can actually figure out whether we've got deuterium or hydrogen present, but otherwise they act pretty much exactly the same. So let's think about what would happen in this reaction. What would be the product of this reaction? Well, we haven't changed anything on the right-hand side here. We're still going to have the CH3s, but what we really want to know is whether it's the deuterium or the hydrogen which is going to make it in this elimination reaction. And it might help to redraw our cyclic cyclohexane as a chair cyclohexane. Maybe we'll just modify this a little bit here. Hey, give me, give me my pen back. Thank you. All right. So let's try doing that. And maybe we should number everything here. So let's call this carbon one. This is not IUPAC numbering. It's just keep track of things numbering. So we'll call this carbon one, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, to save time, remember that in an E2 reaction on a cyclohexane, we always want to have our leaving group axial. So it would really help us out if we were to draw our bromine axial. And we can draw in the rest of our groups here. If we want to draw in the rest of the groups on the cyclohexane. Okay. And that, that's carbon one, and it is axial, and we're going clockwise, numbering clockwise around the ring. That makes carbon two. Uh, we have CH3 here and CH3 here, three, four, five, and six, five. So we've got deuterium. Now, deuterium's a wedge. As we look down on our ring, if it's a wedge, we want it to be the first thing we see as we look down. So that's why bromine's a wedge, bromine is axial. Bromine is up here, in other words. Deuterium is up, and the up group on carbon six is here. So we would have, it's up equatorial and down axial. So it would be like this. 
Okay, so when we're gonna do this elimination reaction, remember in the E2, the hydrogen is anti-periplanar to the leaving group. And we have our bromine here, it's pointing straight up, and that means that we would have to remove whatever is pointing straight down. And in this case, what would that be? Well, straight up bromine, straight down is this green hydrogen. So we would therefore have to remove this green hydrogen. The deuterium is not lined up anti-periplanar, in other words, 180 degrees. Uh, another way of looking at that, think of it like a clock, where a clock reading six o'clock or 12.30, they have to be lined up like that. So our base is going to take a proton away here. So take the proton here, and we're going to form a double bond between carbon one and carbon six, and then we're going to break the carbon one, carbon six bond, and that will give us this. And this for aficionados, this is not the most perfect way to draw a cyclohexene but this will do for us CH3, CH3. So what's this gonna give us? Well, it's gonna leave us with a deuterium here and then we're gonna have a hydrogen here as well. So this would be carbon one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that's an example where the deuterium would be left behind and the hydrogen would go onto the CH3O minus. Now, what if we reversed it? If we reversed the position of the deuterium and hydrogen, so if we made the deuterium on the bottom and the hydrogen on top, then it would be the exact opposite situation, right? So we'd have hydrogen, deuterium, and then hydrogen would be left behind and deuterium would be going onto the O. And this is kind of a useful rule of thumb, actually. If you wanna look closely at your leaving group, you want to always remove a hydrogen. If your bromine is a wedge, so you will always hydrogen, always remove hydrogen is that is on the opposite side of the ring in an E2. So if bromine is a wedge, we're gonna be removing the dashed hydrogen. If we changed our wedge bromine, let's say we made it into a dashed bromine, okay, then what would happen? Well, what would be favorable then? Well, you should say that if we're gonna do this elimination reaction, if this is a dash, we're gonna to have to remove whatever's next door and which is a wedge, which in this case is the deuterium. So just keep that in mind. Whenever you identify your leaving group, you always want to remove the group that is opposite to it. And that's a good rule of thumb to keep for elimination reactions in general. And the E2 in cyclohexanes is one of the places in organic chemistry where this comes up the most.